Hey, oh, Omni Dogs and Omni Kittens. It's Omni Dog. And with me today is Fangirls Assemble's own Faria. Hey, Faria. everyone. How are you? How are you doing, Jess? I'm doing well. And you're here to help me review in our cosmic readathon Prelude, yeah. War of Kings Prelude. Road, Road to War of Kings. Right. So, so we're kind of late to this because we were supposed to be doing this when, Jess? <laughs> <laughs> last month last month or was it in march because i feel like oh my gosh was it in march no it was supposed to be in april this is june by the way is so we're june months, okay <laughs> we're two months late to this but hey better late than never you know that's what i say um gosh i forgot that this was due in april you sure this wasn't due in may okay <laughs> Okay. I'm totally, it, the reason is me. I'm the reason. She, hey, okay. Listen. Maria is not the reason. I am the reason it's late. <laughs> I, was glad, I was kind of setting you up there. I'm <laughs> glad you talked to it because I totally. have finished my homework on time. Like, you know, a good obedient student that I am, but someone. <laughs> that is me. Well, okay. Well, I'm finished reading it. <laughs> um, now I will be the first to, yeah, I'm the first to admit I was late. Okay, so, but uh, we've read Annihilation and Annihilation Conquest, and now we're reading Prelude to War of Kings, Road to War of Kings. And this, uh, I will be the first to admit that I grew up a, a DC fanboy, so I don't know. Uh, I started reading Marvel probably back in 2008 when I started going to uh, Third Eye Comics, which you know of um you and i've been to in annapolis mm -hmm. and they're the ones that got me started on where to read in marvel so a lot of this marvel cosmic stuff is new to me and um so this kicks off with um the repercussions from house of m you right. don't yeah you don't need this quicksilver here you don't need to read house of m to understand what's going on in this, but House of M is what has happened leading up to this. And Spider-Man is uh, quite bitter uh, because um, some of these some of these people. Now, let me see if I got this right. Some of these people remember what it was like before. Uh, House of M um, wiped out their powers. I mean, they remember what it was like when House of M wiped out their powers, but it also turned Peter Parker's life around, right? Right. So if you want me to kind of give you a quick update of what happens in House of M, because it's actually kind of my all-time favorite event. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I don't like events that much, but I did do really like this one because what happens um now I'm forgetting her name, Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch, yeah. She, she was very, um, she had a traumatic event where she loses her children. Well, she finds out that her children were never real because comics, right? Right. Um, and then she kind of goes really upset and she figures out that, oh, everything that happens because of mutants. So she kind of screams, no more mutants. And I don't know whether that happened before or after, but anyway, so what happens when she says no more mutants, everyone who were mutant loses their power. But before that, uh, everyone was transported to uh, alternate universe, alternate reality, where everyone is peaceful, everyone is happy, and Magneto is was actually the king at that time. And in that universe, Spider-Man was happy and back with Gwen Stacy. Gwen Stacy, yeah, okay. Yeah, That's um, what he's referring to then in this. Right. So yeah. the, he was back with Gwen Stacy and they had a kid. But when like Wolverine and a lot of people kind of realizes that, oh, this is not reality. So they breaks that and brings him back and he's bitter about that. Yeah, and that I think I think that's when she says no more mutants. Right. So when they brings them back, that's when it's like oh, no more mutants, and then all of mutant population are decimated. Um, I think like only about ten percent or something's left, and 
as you know, with X Men, they cannot go on a year without something tragic happen to them, and this is kind of part of that. So when we first start, Quicksilver is at its absolute worst because he is he lost his super speed, so now he's like a normal person, and how he kind of becomes drug addict because of that. Yeah, and he's Quicksilver is. Um the former husband of Crystal of the Inhumans, and there's Lockjaw in this. And I'm not going to go over this book page by page, but I think it's interesting that um, uh, we, we see a lot of Quicksilver being a, a bit of a jerk in this setup for House of, or sorry, Son of M. Um, and I, I, di I didn't really have any... Um, I didn't really have any uh, history of Quicksilver before, and I asked the Omnibros, "Is Pietro always this much of a jerk?" And they, the Omnibros, pretty much all said, "Actually, yeah, he is kind of a jerk." And I said, "Well, why did Crystal marry him then?" Because and comics. and what's that? Because comics. Because comics, I guess. Yeah, and which is the answer to everything. Yeah. <laughs> and so. Quicksilver hatches a plot to go in and steal the uh, some of the Terrigen crystals because he's hoping exposure to them will um, give some of these mutants back their powers. Am I correct in that remembering that? Right. So he says that, well, because X-Men, like mutants and inhumans are same. That's what he says in his world. And like, he thinks that, oh, they're, we're pretty much the same. So if we, ex if I expose myself to Carrigan Crystal, Tarragon or Tarragon? Tarragon? Either way, I think you're fine. Yeah, Tarragon Mist, then I'll get my power back and everything will be fine again. Well, it doesn't. And that kind of escalates the next War of King that begins because of this event. Right, because uh, within the ranks of the Inhumans, uh, there's a guy who decides that it's in the Inhumans' best interests if the Inhumans um, go to war uh, and defend themselves against um, humanity and the, because the Americans come and steal the Terrigen, 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 whatever, however you pronounce it, ter take the Terrigen crystals into their own hands. And so the mute, uh, the Inhumans declare war against the, the U.S. And because uh, that's, that's like the, like, you know, the most smartest thing you can do. <laughs> Because we're like, okay, we're gonna, we're like a small population in the moon. And even though we have power, and even our king has the power to destroy everything with just a whisper, we're yeah. gonna declare war uh, to the, you know, the most powerful country, nation in the world. Yeah, he whispers war and destroys like everything. He destroys everything. whatever's the leftover of Genosha, which is once again, these mutants cannot catch a break. Like that's all I learned from them. Like, oh, please stop. <laughs> no wonder why they mopes all the time. Like they're so sad. <laughs> they're, so sad. they're tragic people. Like it's just it's just sad. <laughs> so this um a book is like a little bit of everything. I don't, it's right. not like an Annihilation or Annihilation Conquest, or I've already started reading War of Kings and that's, um, that all flows together. This feel, this is a bunch of things put together, I think that leads to War of Kings. It's more of a bridge between Annihilation Conquest and War of Kings. So it's, uh, it's a bunch of things put together and let me see who wrote i know i'm gonna regret finding out who wrote this because it's probably somebody who i really like it is it's ed brubaker who wrote this x-men deadly genesis um right. it's probably the only thing written by ed brubaker that i've ever not liked um and it's and it's not ed brubaker's fault i'm sure it's 
editorial's fault because they gave him this giant retcon to write this X X Men thing. Uh, this is, I think, a ridiculous story. And in my, this is just, okay. This is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I, go ahead. No, no. Go. You finish it. Finish your thought. <laughs> um, introducing this character Vulcan as a long lost Summers brother and a uh, a person that was part of um, the original, uh, uh, um, a, a backup plan to uh, the kids they sent into the lost world to help rescue uh, back in giant size X-Men. Um, he becomes like a lost character. This is like the retcon of all retcons. It, um, he's he's apparently Professor X created uh, a backup group of X Men that with a with a uh, undiscovered Summers brother that was gonna that was gonna go in and help find the giant sides X-Men crew in the Lost Lands or the Savage Lands rather back when they were having trouble and they all got killed and only Vulcan lived and uh, Professor X has lived with his guilt his whole life. Uh -oh. and <laughs> no, I'm not doing it at you. No, I know. I know you're not. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. And, and he's got, um, this character that lives in Vulcan has this character that lives inside of him, Darwin, um, who morphs out of him and it becomes a whole thing. Um, <laughs> I've, I'm sorry. I thought it was ridiculous. No, oh my God. Okay. So do you want to know how I felt about this? Yes, I do. Okay. So my whole thing was like, like seriously, after reading that whole thing, because I'm like, okay, it's Ed Brubaker. Yeah. So, you know, I love Ed Brubaker. And I'm like, okay, after reading this, the the only thing I could say was, <laughs> <laughs> I was literally like, oh, what's happening? So, I mean, like you, I don't have much, like, you know, much no knowledge of X-Men. Like, you know, I know a lot, a lot more about the other Marvel universe and more of that is more modern. So I don't know anything about the past. I don't know much about the X-Men and, um, or their lore, but even me, I could say that this is a bad decision or whatever they're doing is not right. Like it was just why? So, but I am still kind of hoping that in War of King, this is explained and we know the reason. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it happens. So I don't know. Don't tell me because you've already read War of Kings. Well, I've, I've read a solid third of it now. Okay. Because I, I don't want to be late again. So I got a head start on it. <laughs> God, giving yourself a heads up, didn't you? But the thing is like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just like, but as you said, like this is just like a lot of hodgepodge things just kind of put together to kind of tell you that what's coming up. And right. I, I am a little like, I don't know, like when people were reading it, did they knew about it, that this is coming or this was kind of just a sit of the fly thing. And then someone decided that, hey, look, we have something good in our hand. Let's just make a War of Kings out of this. So I don't know what was the thing. I mean, that was kind of like the first half was all of this build up. Like we get um, Terrigen Crystal, why they're not in, no longer with Atla, with Inhumans, Inhumans declaring war, right. that ending really weirdly. And I didn't even get that bit as well because one point Maximum, Maximus is a villain, then Secret Invasion happens, then all of a sudden like, oh, he's not a villain, we're just gonna work together. And among all of this, all the retcon that you talked about, so that's where we're kind of left off and we're told that, well, War of Kings will begin next. Um, that's kind of like how I felt. Right, well that takes us up through a bunch of the book because um, that, um, that takes us up, because then that takes us up through the Guardians, then we come to a bunch of Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. Right. Um, I loved. 
I loved that Guardians of the Galaxy. I did too. I thought the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff was fun. It was where uh, Peter uh, tries to get the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, that that we saw formed in Annihilation Conquest at the end of Conquest. It was that Guardian we see in full action. Right. It's the it's this group that gets together that we that we know uh, sort of and love that. He gets together um, the kind of famous group, um, and uh, so it, these are a bunch of stories. Well, actually, it's it's not the the group from the movies, but it's a it's a bunch of the characters. It's got movie? Adam Warlock in it, and it's the, um, the movie that is going to be because, right. You know, have you seen that? How in the in the, it's kind of like an inverse because in the movie. They started off with a smaller group, and now we know that all of these other people are coming. Right. Because in this one, it just from the get go. Like right, with Adam Warlock and um, let's see, who else is in yes. there? Philavel. Philavel, right. Um, and then and, the movie group. Right, and then the movie group. And so these are a bunch of. These are actually well done stories, I think, that all flow together really well. Tell an interesting story. Um, uh, they've they've got they deal with um, uh, um, a, a planet of believers of this. Um, uh, of they this, should believe, damn it! Yeah, <laughs> of this and uh, very powerful strong um religious sect but it's like on a cosmic level it's not like a small church it's like a cosmic level belief system that causes temporal uh space rifts with their actions right because so, they believe so much <laughs> because right they they actually cause a lot of problems and there's some secret invasion stuff that's going along inside the book that actually, if you know, you need to know a little bit about secret evasion and all you need to know is that Skrulls have uh, tried to infiltrate the whole universe, including especially Earth. And, but uh, this, this is like one of the situation where the tie-ins is kind of interesting. Like, yeah. it's not, it doesn't stop the main story. It keeps it flowing and you just need to know that hey they invaded now what and right it's not doesn't take away and it was done really well what i really liked though is like the there's like it's kind of like a reality tv style like the guardians because they have the camera moment right they, the solo camera moment where they come back and report back and it's kind of it's very funny and really flows like i really really enjoyed it that it was kind of like well done, well put together. I totally agree. And um, so a lot happens to um, the Guardians um, where they're dealing uh, with a lot of cool uh, stuff that actually comes to uh, a reasonable uh, end, not ending, but it, it it flows. It comes to it leads into some secret invasion stuff, and then we get um, a bunch of Nova stuff. Yeah, Nova's <laughs> back from like from the conquest time because we when we saw him last, he kind of goes off to do his own thing because Nova Corps is still not put together. Um, so I think uh, Peter Quill says that, oh, you should join the Guardians, but he's like, no, I need to still go and put Nova Corps together. And we first see him fighting off with Galactus or facing off Galactus and Silver Surfer, which I thought was very fun. Then he's back on Earth fighting the secret invasion and all of that. So because it kind of all happens at the same time. And then yeah, there's some of the scenes of him yeah. fighting uh, Galactus and Silver Surfer. Yeah. Because, yeah. So after the secret invasion, it kind of leads to, once again, a very good tie-in, I thought. Because it was kind of like he's doing his own thing and moves the plot forward. And then we find out the world mind has a different idea on what to do. And which is something I don't did not see coming and I don't want to spoil it. So 
But I was like, whoa, because it leaves us with a very interesting scenario that I'm very looking forward to seeing how it gets resolved. Yeah, I am too. The world mind, I think we can say separates and from uh, Nova, Richard Ryder, and uh, becomes his own Nova. Um, right. he, he becomes so to speak. Like, yeah, because World Mind was kind of under a little bit under his control. Like he was, um, he needed Nova to survive, but he doesn't anymore. And dun 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 dun. <laughs> like, so you know. he, he makes some very big decisions uh, right. as his own separate Nova uh, being. Because, so here's the thing. Remember in the last episode of when we were talking about Annihilation Conquest, I said that. It's kind of interesting for the first time ever, a computer is a male, like it's not a female. Oh yeah, right, 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 right. Well, because he's evil. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the thing is like, it's like, you know, there is like a lot of things that happen uh, because I'm like, oh, that's very interesting. Why is he like that? Well, there is some things that happens. There's reasons behind that. So I am so ex so stoked to kind of see how both Guardians and Nova stories goes forward. Right, and then the book ends up with Drax and um, what's her name, Vel, uh, Quasar, what's her name? Uh, uh, Tyla Vel? Yeah. Um, looking for Moondragon. Um, yeah, because no one stays dead. We know that. <laughs> Except they end up getting killed and quote, killed. Right. They get and um well there actually there's about three stories that intercept intersect uh at the very end. They're looking for Moon Dragon. Adam Warlock is looking for uh the head of that church still, and then um uh, Star Lord ends up uh, in the negative verse uh, with dealing with Blastar, and then uh, that prison, the the negative zone initiative prison. He's dealing with um, breaking out prisoners, and but he doesn't want to break out prisoners because he's with Blastar and he's just trying to survive. So there's like about three things that happen here at the uh, very end of the book that intersect and, but they all make sense and they all come to a resolution. Uh, and there's also something that we, uh, <laughs> this is all a bunch of things put together because there's one last thing is that somebody's sent from the future back to the present because of the War of Kings. When the War of Kings happens, it sets in motion an event that destroys the future. So somebody is sent from the, and this somebody, uh, and I'm only saying somebody because I forget their name. It's not that I can't reveal it. <laughs> what, who is it again? It's, they no, carry Cap's shield yeah, and. No, but the thing is like, I'll be honest, I forgot the name too. Okay. <laughs> so here's the thing, that wasn't the most memorable part, which is kind of disappointing because we are remembering all this other thing. Right very interesting person who comes back and there was this all this drama associated with that that kind of intersects with Christ, uh, secret inv invasion as well and we can't remember them oh wait but okay i got it wrong it's starhawk starhawk comes back and is a female this time and says the future tense is in flux but there's somebody from the or does she carry cap shield no that's no. uh he carried <laughs> Someone else carried Cap Shield. Vance Astro carried Cap Shield and was in. Okay, maybe I'm not doing a good job remembering this that well. I thought Vance. A yeah, Vance Astro does carry Cap Shield in some kind of Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. In some type of Guardians of the Galaxy type scene. Uh, I'm not doing a good job explaining it, but it does make sense <laughs> at some point. They they do do a good job of making it making it all make sense. Uh, I'm not doing a good job explaining it, but it but there there is time travel involved. Uh, it, somebody comes back. Somebody's found frozen in ice. 
The future tense is in flux because of this war of kings. Oh, my God. And so there's a lot going on in this book. So we're trying to explain it the best we can. <laughs> but it's kind of hard to, um, because I feel like if we haven't read War of Kings, these are all like, so th the way I see it, if I didn't know War of Kings coming, and if I was reading all of this, I would be very confused. Like, I would be like, what's happening right now? Why are we reading this? But because I know that War of Kings coming, I'm more like, oh, okay, I guess I'm going, it's going to be explained. It's right. Okay. You know, it's okay. I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm just going to go with the flow and it's going to be explained. So all of this better be explained. Yeah. That's why, because, I mean, it, that's one of the reasons, like, you know, when we talked about it before, um, like, I was thinking, like, I'm like, is it good? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, definitely the Nova and Guardians part is because it's kind of on its own. Like, you were, like, right. you were, you're, you're still in, in enjoying it. But everything else before that, all the things, I'm like, I don't know, because they were very, like, kind of separate incident. I'm like, okay, why do I need to know this? But unless I read War of Kings, I wouldn't know. And I said, I said Tylerville, and I meant Phylavel. I know I, I mispronounced, I missaid that because there's so many characters in this book. Oh, my God. And I don't think you were the only one who was like, oh, I don't know anything because I read DC. I think Marvel people didn't know about this either. <laughs> <laughs> because these are like cosmic uh like you know these characters these are all in flux or limbo or pretty much just showed up in once or twice in previous things and they just took them all together and created this whole saga starting from annihilation to now like you know yeah like yeah. this is the this is i took the cover off and this is the cover oh, so um good. it's it's great looking but i didn't know anybody on this cover except for rocket raccoon and this is and Cap's shield. So I don't know what's going. I mean, now I do because I read the book. But at first, when I looked at this, I thought, "Who are all right. these characters?" Right. Who are these people? And see, <laughs> to be honest, if the Guardians of the Galaxy movie wasn't out, I don't know anyone. Oh yeah, like, no. I wouldn't know anyone. One thing I would say though, because we are bringing the movie, I was really pissed after reading this as how bad Mantis is portrayed in the movie. Oh, she's just sort of a giggling schoolgirl. Right. Oh, but here she's like a field agent. She's like the their psychiatrist. She's keeping them together. She has so much more to do. But in the movie, she's like, uh, like I don't yeah. know. Like, oh, stop. Also, yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, I liked I liked Phyla, Vel, and Drax on the Moon Dragon quest. But I think that one thing, as I get to know more about the Cree, I don't like what they did with um, uh, with the guy. Um, okay, now I'm botching it up. In the first movie, Ronan the Accuser. Oh my God! Don't he's nothing like the comic book. No, not at all. We I think we talked about it in Annihilation. In Annihilation. Right, we probably did. Yeah. <laughs> I am so pissed off. Like, this is one of the things, like, how much he got shafted. So, obviously, I understand because the movie, they have to do certain things. You cannot, you know. But honestly, like, I feel like because they kind of got away with it because these characters are not even well known. So, they're like, we can just do whatever we want to do. Uh, yeah, a lot of things did not go plan. Like, you know, it's not not like done right i'm surprised that there is not enough outrage well because people don't know about these characters yeah I, I think you're right i think because it ended up being so popular that people were must have been willing to give it a pass or something because it ended up being both those movies ended up being more popular i think than, the than they, they even on. thought right I, well i think in the general public they ended up being super popular but i guess maybe I, I mean, I liked it, but I didn't have any idea who the Guardians of the Galaxy were before I went to see the movie. No, and I think only, they do adjust only, to the core team, but it's the supporting characters. Right. It just, just shafts them left, right, and center. Like, you're like, okay, why? I think Rocket is done picture perfect. Like, yeah. Rocket and... Peter Quill are two characters that are done picture perfect, but everyone else is dumber version of their comic book. 
Yeah, I don't know. I haven't read Guardians of the Galaxy is a book that I haven't read enough of to know. Uh, I, the only uh, I've only read the Jerry Duggan Guardians of the Galaxy, and then I've only read what I've read in these these books as right. far as Guardians of the Galaxy. I haven't read, and maybe <laughs> some of the solo classic stuff. No, but don't you think like you know, for example, Drax is kind of dumber in the comic. <laughs> He's in the funnier movie. though. He is funnier in the. Well, he is movies. funnier, but the thing is, like, I feel like there is there should have been a middle version. But yeah, like, they do play him as um as a as a bit of a dummy, I guess. I see what you're saying. Yeah, like, there's a middle version. Like you you just get either like the really vengeful version from the comic book, or you get the dumbed down version from the movie there is like i wish like it was like a little bit combination of both in the movie if you know what i mean yeah like it just because he's not tactical like he is in the comic book um you know he kind of even in the secret invasion i kind of like that he kind of goes on his own try to solve some things and stuff in the movie version you don't see that like you know he just, in the movie version he just kind of jumped into the monster because he wanted to take it from within yeah Right. Like, no, it just it just like a little bit, and then also, of course, Mantis. I was like, oh, come on. Yeah, I had no idea she was really like that uh, right. until this book. I didn't know right. she was. Oh. I... So... <laughs> but anyway, I don't know. But I'm kind of excited to see where it goes from there because it feels like the movie version is going to progress to this version, hopefully. Yeah. Um, so overall, I mean. This is you kind of have to read this to to because it sets up War of Kings. Um, I so if you've read Annihilation and Annihilation Conquest, you kind of have to read Road to War of Kings since it sets up so much of what's going on. As far as the stories in here, some of them are really good, some of them are average, and some of them um, are just. I just did. one of them, that X-Men one just was um, a stain. Bad. <laughs> Bad. Just the more I think about it, the the more I'm really angry about it. Right. So I think like, you know, I, I think it would be fair for the people of this book if we read War of Kings and come back to notify people whether they need to read this or not. I, you definitely need to read Guardians and Nova, but all the ones before, I'm still trying to figure out whether people could have read a Wikipedia version and get away with it. <laughs> well, the I will tell you, War of Kings starts out with about 20 X-Men comics that deal with Vulcan, so... Oh, boy. Okay, in that case, you got to read this. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's But I, I'll also say, since we've gotten that retcon out of the way, those stories are actually good in Road of... I mean, in War of Kings. I, I found those stories to be actually interesting in War of Kings. It's this whole retcon of stuff that didn't exist before that we have such a distaste for. I just... Um, I still don't understand. Why couldn't we just say, like, hey, there's this new person, Vulcan. Why does he have to be a summer brother? Yeah, and why does Professor X have to have this guilt that all of a sudden he had this team that all of a sudden he and uh put in put shoved into uh battle before they were ready and it caused a rift between him and moira mctaggart and i yay i mean i'm telling you this x-men and the mutants cannot catch a break no i they never will i don't they think not catch a break but anyway yeah so i don't know um i'm excited to read war of king um so I'm, I'm like, you know, so that's kind of get me going. But I am kind of kind of like, you know, one thing I would say, though, they the way they put the omnibus set together, um, I don't know whether it was intentional, whether they made the plan for it, because having Nova story continuing from Conquest makes me want to pick this up. And now having read this, now I want to pick the next chapter up because I want to know what happens to the Guardians and Nova. Um, so I think it's kind of done in a very, like in a way that you won't be able to stop. Mm. Okay. That's what so I think. I feel like, you know, I, at no point I'm like, oh, okay, I don't want to read the rest. I think I have enough. Well, no, because they leave you, 
breadcrumbs that you were like, oh, dang it, I want to go to the next one. So that's a good, like, I, I mean, I don't know, like commercially, I guess it's a great thing. Okay, we'll see if War of Kings is like that too then. Right, and I'm kind of interested to see like how War of, once we're done with War of Kings, if we are still interested in reading Aftermath of War of Kings. Right, if it's got the same hook on those stories. Right. So do you think like overall you feel like um, that this has been interesting? Like, you know, like I know that you had a different idea once you were done with Conquest. You were like, I don't like Annihilation that much. But I yeah, I think it's it's held my interest a lot more than Annihilation did. Um, uh, so, yeah, this has gone a lot deeper and is more interesting than I think Annihilation was. OK. All right. Yeah. So far, and I think the war, I think War of Kings is going to be uh, set up as uh, something more interesting, also. Okay, I yeah, think because I, it looks like to me, yeah, I agree. Because I mean, you know, when I read Annihilation, I'm like, oh, great, but you know, if I, I don't think I would have picked it up if I wasn't so keen on knowing Nova. Mm. If you know what I mean, like you know, I wouldn't have continued. Then I need when I did conquer, like like that's what I was saying. There's a plot thread that they're starting that I'm like, okay, I want to follow this through. So that's why I'm keep on going. Yeah. So, and one of the things I I think we all know by now, Annihilation is coming back as a reprint. Right. Yeah. So, so you'll get your chance uh, at the end of this year, beginning of next year, to read Annihilation and in omnibus form and to read the whole saga in omnibus form if you right. so choose because you know that in-stock trade price that we pay 50 percent off or for the first week or 42 percent off that's right. a good price to pay for the analytic conquest the analytic omnibus anything I more agree. i would recommend <laughs> i totally agree with that right <laughs> i totally so agree with that. that so anyway all right do you think okay. anything else we can add um, there's a whole thing of extras at the end of this that I would yeah. not read if I were you, the viewer out there, that tells you exactly what happens in War of Kings. It spoils all of War of Kings, so don't oh, read it. Good, because I didn't read it. <laughs> you didn't read it? Okay, good, because it's at the end and it tells you everything that happens in War of Kings. And fortunately, somebody told me about it and said, don't read it. I think it was Geo who okay. said, don't read that. It's okay. A, it's a it's a it's extra material, but it's stuff that you don't want to read. Okay. So the reason I didn't read it, I'm like, uh, so many words. <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, it's <laughs> good that you didn't read it. But that's good. Okay. Because you know, in, so I think it's just like the ones that we had in the annihilation, like you know, the omnibus, like at the end, the summary, it's that, but for War of Kings. Um this this goes on and tells you exactly what happens in War of Kings, though. Whereas that was like playing cards and play, uh, cards that told you the biographies of all the players yeah, and stuff yeah. in the in the big play that was Annihilation Conquest. Um, this goes on to tell you the next book in the series and what happens in it. So it spoils oh, the whole that. thing. <laughs> that is so dumb. Yeah, oh I don't know. So well, yeah, not here that should be like somewhere else. Yeah, I don't know. So don't read it. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good to know. But anyway, that's yeah. Thank you for that because I was feeling bad though. I'm like, oh damn, I didn't read it. But was, <laughs> you can feel okay now because you didn't spoil it for yourself. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So we are gonna be back with War of Kings. When do you think? I think next week. If you if okay. you finish it, I'll I'll finish it by then. Yeah, no, I, now I have a reputation to maintain that I, I complete my homework. That's right. And I have a reputation to get rid of that I don't do my homework. So <laughs> That's true. Well, no, at least you can read that whole chapter and then just come back. <laughs> right. I could cheat. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to cheat. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay, good. All right. Well, thank you for watching, uh, everybody out there in Omni Dog Land. I appreciate it, and I appreciate uh, my co-host Faria for coming on and Anytime. helping me with this. Thank you, and uh, please subscribe, hit the like button, and leave a comment. We'll always respond. And peace and love. Peace and love.